All right, everybody, welcome to another installment of Moonhawk Studios Presents. We are inside the studio today because we have no guest. And uh, there will be an explanation of this ongoing saga shortly. But before we get to that, with me in the studio is my good friend Adam. Saga is a word for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kevin collecting the stubs. I uh, cut them in half, put them in the pocket somehow. <laughs> Petty fan running the gizmos. Can the week end already, please? Mm. And Gallic switching hats rapidly as we speak. Ah, uh, yes. As many of them as possible are waterproof. That's right. Huh. There we go. <laughs> well, if they're waterproof, that means you can use them as buckets to bail out the water. Enough mm-hmm. of them, you can use them as a hat. Or as a hat. Wow. Bray, <laughs> as a boat. <laughs> I'm just going to go fucking walk it up, walk <laughs> off the overpass now. Bye. You pull over, you pull something. You are nice correct Johnson. that ultimately hats and buckets uh, are a overlapping Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Some buckets are hats. Anyway. Let's just get right to it. Uh, Adam, kick us off with the news. Well, <clears throat> I suppose the common theme this week is going to be last weekend's with Easter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, um, what other people's uh, Easter plans were here, but mine involved an extended stay with uh, my brother and his kids. In all of that draining glory. <laughs> like, look, uh, they are very rambunctious dynamos of energy. Uh-huh. And on the upside, I suppose, they rather enjoyed the egg hunts that I set up for them. Maybe a bit too much. Like, fist fights broke out. Because siblings, like, if you know anything about siblings, you know mm-hmm. how that goes when you're kids. Mm-hmm. Like, especially when they're relatively close in age. So, nobody got hurt or anything. It's just, you know, uh, one of the kids was finding too many eggs. And that led to arguments, which led to raised hands, which led to, you know, sibling violence. Someone caught these hands, huh? Yeah, that's a way of putting it. Like, that's my news for the week. All right. Kevin? All right. Uh, Well... As I spoke about on the pre-show, uh, my theater is uh, in the midst of change, if you will. Um, one entire side of our theater was shut down the last couple of days as we are getting uh, a completely new set of projectors for every single set of our theater. Every single screen in our theater. Uh, going from digital bowl based projectors to laser projectors in order to uh, have us stop having uh, projector issues all the time. Uh, what do you do on that? Laser projectors? Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, the, mo- the newest more modern uh, projectors it, that they have. In, in the immortal it's words of David based. Letterman, in the immortal words of David Letterman, them's lasers, kids. <laughs> what part <laughs> exactly. of it includes lasers? Uh, the entire projector uh, part. It's, it's, yeah, the projector, yeah. The projector that uses lasers to get it to the screen instead of... Just an it, it's ball the, the space, through yeah. film. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry, they're cold lasers, so they won't burn the screen. <laughs> well, um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that made uh, my job a little bit more interesting this week. Hopefully, uh, things will be all done by the time I go back there on Friday, but I don't know. Consi- I don't have. I don't even know. Considering our theater, hopefully nothing else goes wrong. 
And it's just simply cleaning theaters and dealing with the uh, rowdy teenagers all the time. It's always fun. Mm. And also mess and also, and also messy grown people who uh, don't know how to act considered in public. Um, but that, uh, normal weekends at the AMC, and uh, that's all for me this week. Uh, Penny, right. what's your news? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, I did want to say uh, quickly. I did my part for AMC theaters last week and saw yes, Ghostbusters: did. Frozen Empire. So. <laughs> And I and I appreciate that. We appreciate that if you're a patron. All right. Yes. Uh, Penny, what I'm is your stubs news? Member. I'm now a Stubbs member after like 20 years. Oh man. Oh, oh you are oh you're a part uh, what level? Uh whatever one ticket at 750 gets me. Well, it's uh, the insider probably because that's the free one. But anyway, so yeah. Yeah, that is my news for the week. And Penny, what is yours? Oh God. Um. So <laughs> oven repair. We're gonna be okay. here for a while. Yeah, we are. That was a start. <laughs> okay, where to fucking begin? So I did mention the terminal block burned out in the oven last week. Yes. Mm, yeah, yes. I saw pictures. I saw pictures of an angry glowing. <laughs> Yes, uh, me, me doing my best Prometheus impression. Oh, oh no. That would be you actually oh, setting the stove on fire. I believe me, I fucking <laughs> thought about it. <laughs> All right, I guess since I didn't mention that, uh, the fun stuff. Uh, Saturday, I went down to the local card shop that's not going to be there in in probably a few weeks. And got myself a Alphamon or you can premium killer. It's one of the premium Bandai figures. I got it. it usually they go for like 140 and I got it for like 70 because store going out of business. And then I also got from the original Digimon card game, they had like one of those little starter deck. Kind of like how Magic used to do it back in the day where they have like random cards in them. And I I just happened to have one that had the Metal Garurumon and War Greymon that apparently are going for like $75 on eBay. So, jackpot. <laughs> Got those for like 20 bucks. So, all in all, not bad. Um, I do want to look for a case to display the Alphamon figure in because... The one thing I don't like about the premium Keller figures is they are painted and dust plus painted figure equals terrible time. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's something to look for in the near future. Um, Sunday we weren't able to go to the card shop because of Easter. And then Monday. Monday I got the parts to fix the oven. So that became an all day adventure. Oh, good lord. I am still sore from that shit show. Um, our, uh, uh, looking at the manual for the damn thing, our oven is from about 85. It still has the original terminal blocks, which means the original screws were rusted to the metal. I tried for oh hours to get that damn thing unscrewed. I ended up having to say fuck it around like three or four and have my dad come help me with it. It was funny. He thought he was <laughs> going to be smug and come up there thinking like, oh, he's I'm not that strong. And then he looked at the screwdriver and saw it was bent. <laughs> he went downstairs and got more tools out of his bag because he quickly realized what was about to go down and was like, oh, Oh, I'm not ready for this quite yet. <laughs> but yeah, with a little destructive force, we were able to get it off. Luckily, the bracket that held it on was had the replacement in the terminal kit, and we didn't do any severe damage to the oven itself. Yeah, it looks a little wonky, and the drip pan doesn't lay completely flat, but I do not give a flying fuck. <laughs> And so, yeah, now it works. We have fire. Well, the close to electric heat fire can get. You know what I mean. 
So yeah, um, next month we're going to see about replacing the other two el heating elements on the other side. So that way, you know, we don't have to worry about those burning out and destroying another terminal block. And I learned how wire nets work, and I hate it. <laughs> Fuck wire nets entirely. Uh, let's see. And then Tuesday, my dad had a job interview. He now has a job, and his start date is April 29th. So, yay. Um, unfortunately, he is going to be working 9 to 5, Monday through Friday now. So I will be unable to do physical therapy because I can't drive because of my physical disability, which sucks. So we need to see about what can be done about that. And then moving any doctor's appointments to be more advantageous because, like, my mom, it's a lot easier for her to take, you know basically off after lunch and just do a half day at work which you know saves her on pto time and stuff like that so we'll we need to work on adjusting schedules and whatnot because all my doctor's office stuff is over an hour away because the local hospital sucks um, so yeah, that's going to be a fun time. Um, and then today I had physical therapy, which I'm still sore and tired from because it's physical therapy. Uh, I had a haircut, which it would have been better if it wasn't so damn cold. I don't know why it's still like only 40 degrees when it should be spring, but Missouri weather. And um, I tomorrow I'm going to get my ID renewed because tis that time. And it's one of those, it's easier to do it now while my dad's off work than try and find a day to go to the DMV or try and do the once monthly Saturday they're open, which no, God, no, you couldn't pay me to go to a DMV on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all in all packed week. Um, and then I guess the only fun thing really is Saturday. We are going to the, Local, it's still over an hour and a half away, but Micro Center. So, yay, nerdy things. And then um, we're on the way back home. We're going to see about going to a card shop. That's It's close enough that if they do Digimon stuff, it could be something to think about. Or at least, like, you know, once every couple weeks doing the Digimon thing there. It's one of those we just need to see and if they even, you know, stock product. But yeah, all in all, it's been very hectic this week. I want it to end. I'm tired. Next person. <laughs> the last name Gollix. <laughs> Is Gollix still here? Did he <sighs> himself? I am. Right now, I miss when yeah. uh, winter storms happen in winter. <laughs> That's a mood runner. Uh, yeah. Because we're looking at another one that has already started, and it's just rain and kind of cold right now, but it's supposed to last it's until early Friday, yeah. so that's not great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I have another model kit picked out for if we lose power again, but I am hoping that we're not going to. Mm -hmm. I'm taking tomorrow off work because we have remote work, but frankly, I'm taking the day off because I don't trust remote work to be available due to power and internet reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what else. Um. 
Uh, I picked up Bellatro the other day because I saw a Petty fan playing it and I'd heard things about it. So uh, I did that and I cleared it on my like second run. I don't know if it was the second period run or the second non tutorial second non tutorial run, but either way. Um, so I'm I kind of stopped playing after that because I wasn't sure if I wanted to take it to endless mode and see how it goes or to try something else. And I'm not sure if you can save more than one run at a time because I was doing pretty well with my going all in on um, two pair and full house uh, deck. Because uh, like one of the first things I got was a thing that improves your multiplier by plus two every time you play a two pair or a, a hand that includes two pair, which is two pair full house, four of a kind. Um. So. But I was, I was think I was getting pretty close to the end of how far that was going to be able to carry me. But I wanted to, you know, find out, kind of. Um. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. This past weekend was Easter, and we had family up, and that was nice. And then after that, I went to Pathfinder for a little while, and unfortunately, uh, some of the people weren't able to be there for other reasons. I think they also had family stuff, but um, uh, I had to save some party members from a group of Hydras. That's, I mean, yes, I did do a lot in the fight, and it's really cool when you have an 18-headed Hydra and you just got an item that lets you hit an 18th target with your Chain Lightning. I know technically the Pathfinder rule involves, like, slashing weapons, but we have no slashing weapons, so we've always used slightly looser rules on Hydra head destruction. Um... But yeah, um, I also had to remind, because one of them is a kineticist, which is a really complicated class that has different abilities, and the other one is a ranger and doesn't always pay attention to his own abilities, so uh, they probably could have avoided the fight and done better if I'd been there from the start by reminding them of abilities that they had that would make it easier. That's about it, though, I think. Ah. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> it's time for Mac Ballad. <laughs> lot of that this week. Uh, yeah. Well, it you know, it's everything everywhere all at once, you know. Um mm -hmm. two water main breaks, power got shut off because of non payment, got payment, then have to pay that back. Uh Still waiting for shower reconstruction, which is allegedly happening Friday. Uh, fence reconstruction next week. I am excavating the backyard. Uh, I found a patio underneath the dirt, underneath the lawn. I was gonna over. I was gonna turn over the the soil to try to even out my backyard. Hold on a second. Pepe. He's singing the song of his people. <laughs> Happy. Thank you. Podcasting here. Um. Anyway, I found a patio underneath there, and so of course I've been looking at uh, yard, yard furniture on Timu for for two hours because ADHD. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I was, oh, I found some lovely wooden stuff like a a, a planter box and with a, a overhang trellis. So I found a garden gate and I was just, I was beside myself. <laughs> uh, you know, as I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I've excavated that patio and I'm going to move my barbecue grills onto it. Uh, it's a few, it's a couple of feet, two or three feet wide. And, uh, runs two-thirds the length of my backyard nice. so uh it'll be pretty nice i'm gonna i'm building kind of like a border box because the the dirt is higher up 
I'm also going to isolate the water main access. Uh, so that way I can try to make the area around as flat as possible. And then uh, we should be able to we should be able to uh, start putting the backyard together in the way that I want. I have a canopy umbrella. I have a full Brinkman barbecue grill that I need to recharge the propane cylinder on. I found a uh, a small clamshell grill uh, with a with a uh, veggie fryer, which I'm kind of excited about, and. Uh, I have my electric infrared. I'm going to get a gas-powered generator for running the electrical appliances that I use outside, such as my edger, my lawnmower, my um, electric grill, and all that stuff. And uh, I'll have a bench, and there's going to be a picnic table back there. And yeah. And uh, I've been tallying up all of my home improvement stuff, and, and uh, sometime over the course of this year, I'll probably be dropping five large on stuff, both for the channel and for my own personal comfort. Uh, just finally getting new things after, after constantly dealing with secondhand stuff and broken shit endlessly for the last 12 years? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, between my ex, <laughs> yeah. between my <laughs> yep, between my ex and my uh, and my former roommates, mm -hmm. delight delightful people that they are. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so no more broken shit, and uh, I'm going to be setting up so that I can entertain the the largest group of people that I know here in Tucson are family, and so. Twice a year, we get together for various family events. Uh, well, th sometimes three times a year. Uh, Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And we rotate between my parents' house, my Uncle Dan's house, and my Uncle John's house. And I may be adding myself to the list um, if I can get these things in place the way I want them. And uh, I just need to get an adapter module for the little disposable propane cylinders that I picked up and I should be able to start cleaning and uh, prepping my uh, my rep my barbecue grills for actual use because they've been laying dormant for five plus years uh, I did test the I did test the Brinkman grill and I need a new igniter for the main burner but uh, the side grill did light up, so I know that the the hoses are still intact. So that's good. And I cleaned off all the leaves and scum that had settled on it over the last five years. So overall, I'm pretty pleased because I I I the whole reason that I moved to an apartment that had a uh, that on the ground level that had a yard was because of the fact that I wanted to be able to entertain and have a barbecue grill. And I thought, oh, well, I'll have roommates and, you know, they'll want to entertain too. So this is going to be great. We'll, we'll do some grilling. We're going to have some backyard uh, festivities and it's going to be great. And then none of that happened. So, yeah. Um, the other thing, of course, that is happening is I am going to be piecing together uh, the 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 main streaming room. This this is my quote unquote personal bedroom. I was originally going to start with this as the streaming room, with my old room being the work room and sleeping room, and then everything went to hell in a handcart, and I had to remove absolutely everything from that room and from the closet, and so now I'm like. The world is my oyster, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, which includes podcasting and streaming. And so in order to revamp the entire channel, uh, I'm going to be setting up a station for consoles. I'm going to be setting, which will also have a lot of uh, production software on it for doing streams on Picardo, uh, which will be my art stream going forward. It's like, well, you know, why split your audience by going to multiple venues? Um, well, it's necessary, especially since consider how much of my work is not safe for work. 
Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, Picarto is the only venue available to me, and that will give me fodder for putting behind the pay- paywall at Patreon fully in compliance with guidelines and regulations under the Protect Act, USC 2257, Section 18. <laughs> there you go. So just use that full, full <laughs> legal term. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, in full compliance and with consent. Um, yeah. Let the let the records show <laughs> that the witness yeah. has indicated. Uh, but uh, the big the big event is the is the construction of the arcade room because I'm going to be starting a feature before the end of this year called Arcade Anarchy, and I have earmarked several arcade style emulator machines as well as one up arcade machines. Specifically, a 12 and one Pac-Man door hanger. Oh, and uh, I've got a Street Fighter 2 Everything Edition uh, up, uh, one-up machine located. Possibly Mortal Kombat. And I have a Donkey Kong countertop machine. And then there, in, in that closet, there will be a mini fridge... Uh, I'm building a panel wall for the backside to hide all of the stuff that I'm just unceremoniously stuffing in that closet. <laughs> Cause I do still need storage that isn't clothes. Um, and, uh, and I have probably about $3,000 worth of, of, uh, solar panels and generators and equipment bookmarked on Timu. Um, I need four sets of solar panels, uh, a 2,500 watt, 5,000 watt peak solar generator, and, uh, and a few other things, because I'm going to convert that entire room to solar power. And, uh, I've already, I've already designed a power panel that I'm going to create as an insert for the window. Uh, so that way I don't make any permanent modifications to the building because they don't like that in apartments. But I've got solar lights. I've got, uh, I've got, uh, charging stations. I've got the generators and the panels all mapped out. So it's ready to go. I'm, I'm just, I just have to get the money together to actually do it, which of course, uh, you know, with the power being off, I had to take out yet another loan. And uh, that has to be paid back as well as me clearing my collections and debts and so on and so forth. So uh, the coffee is open. I know, I know. Everybody likes to call it Ko-Fi, but it's coffee because it literally shows a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, and it says, buy me a coffee. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm planning, I got big plans for straightening my shit out and, uh, there's going to be a, there, like I said, there's going to be a new art stream off Twitch. There's going to, uh, of course we've moved Mo- MSP over here to the fragments channel. I'm going to have exclusively gaming on Mac Paladin's retro gaming emporium. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I need to move all of the episodes of last news desk and MSP over to the YouTube channel. Petty fan, I may enlist your aid on that. I will try. I guarantee nothing. Yeah, well, I'll I'll get you the two factor <laughs> authentication temporary login, and you can see what you can find. Um, Noted. Put it put them all into playlists or something like that, so we can at least find them. Because mm-hmm. there's still 600 videos on my channel that. Uh, <laughs> You know, are archived, and uh, otherwise, people just literally have to click back, 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 all the way to the beginning of the list to find anything, because I never bothered to put them in playlists. What's a playlist? Especially our, <laughs> especially our 65-part playthrough of MS Saga, for example. So... 
That's pretty much it for yeah, the Yeah, it would be news. annoying if that disappeared. Yeah. That and also our Langrisser playthrough, although we've already lost a part of that. I'm kind of annoyed. And Macross and so on and so forth. We managed to get through those with a little more alacrity. The Langrisser problem the Langrisser problem well, is that we have been plagued been with plagued external with difficulties. Them. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. it. So let's move on to entertainment news. Now that we've hit the 30 minute mark. <laughs> like, uh, unless we have another, is- unless we had a, a specific show topic somebody wanted to cover. I don't think so. Hmm. Like, but in entertainment news, we shift first to Disney. Mm. Yep. Buckle yeah. up, kids. Actually, no, no, because well, actually, no. Crisis very much averted. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you've been following uh, the situation with Disney over the last few weeks, uh, last few months, you know that there's been a a major proxy fight that has been going on between uh. Bob Iger and Ellen Peltz, um, which also includes uh, Ike Pottermutter, among others. Uh, today, um, the, it was the annual shareholders meeting, and the vote is in, and uh, Nelson Peltz lost big time. Um, apparently, um, uh, I don't think it's been official be announced, but it's more unofficial results have come in and have completed. And no, it's official Bob Iger now. received. Yeah, it's been fit. It's been official. Okay, but I Bob Iger received ninety four percent of the vote to stay on, with uh, the overwhelming votes of shareholders, including seventy five percent of retail shareholders. That's um, important. And, and Nelson Peltz only. Yeah, of all the, after all the millions spent, Nelson Peltz only got thirty one percent of the vote, and um, lost lost by a hard two to one margin. So I, mean, uh, I knew he was done as soon as he started bitching about Marvel movies casting too many uh, people of color and uh, women. <laughs> oh, specifically, <laughs> like, oh, 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 but wait, but wait, but wait, wait. There's more. Because yes. it wasn't just, it wasn't just about Nelson Peltz and uh, um, former CFO Jay Rasulo, who also was on board with this nonsense. It wasn't just the board candidacies. It was also a set of statements, proposals. I don't know. I don't know specifically. Um, uh, many of which um, were pretty much. Technically, kind of supported by the Pelts people, uh, which included um, one of which to basically stop um, playing around with uh, LGBTQ people, and uh, those also were shot down in flames. Thankfully, so. <laughs> Needless to say, the Disney board has had enough had enough of uh, the Pelts nonsense. As it turns out, it was not a smart idea to throw one of Marvel's biggest uh, movie franchises under the bus. You know, <laughs> you know, he specifically yeah. called out um, Black Panther, like. Yeah, but, yeah. He basically, he basically said, uh, "Why is Disney so woke? We got to be stopping so woke." And uh, that plus the whole, you know, Christ. trying to do, do, yeah, trying to be, here's trying to the push actual, the issue here. Okay, here's the actual quote: "Like, why mm-hmm. do I have to have a mar, a Marvel that's all women?" Felt said, "Not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels that are both?" Why do I need an all black cast? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. yikes on strikes, my guy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, dude. This is and yeah, these are his I, actual words. Yeah. Yep. Like, yep, quoted in the Financial Times, not some liberal yep. paper. And he literally said I'm this. Sure to, literally said this. Yeah. 
to and I'm report sure he's to an interviewer why from that. He lost yeah. by a big margin. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm shocked. This yeah. is my shocked face. Yeah. Can you see yes. it? It's my shocked face. Yeah. I'm like, although they although 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 the funny although the most hilarious thing is that they that they tried to have it both ways and that oh we got the company focused on good governance and value creation. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like that's that's the, that's their that's their thing. It's like you know. <laughs> you know, we try. You know, we got the company focused yeah, yeah. on what really matters. Yeah, yeah. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Republicans buy shoes and all that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, the buzz, thing is, yeah, yeah, buzz off. Yeah. Wow. The, the thing is, the thing is here is this this paragraph of bullshit was way too spicy for Disney. Oh, like, it's, it's probably uh, to be fair though. I think it's more. Really, than just that, it's more, you know, typical. Probably firm opposition to the whole concept of activist investors getting involved in this company, which has been a well, thing. Um. Well, it's more emblematic of what uh, was targeted as one of his weakness: inexperience. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. he doesn't have. He doesn't have any actual connections in Hollywood or anything like that. He's a, very much an outsider. Like, and, uh-huh. you know, this... Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, and this is uh, really emblematic because, you know, the uh-huh. opposition against him was a lot of the major shareholders, like George Lucas. Um, uh-huh. Specifically, the came Disney out. family. How, uh, God, how yeah. did the we, Disney how family did, did too? Yeah, how did we not it's see a, that coming? You know, yeah. George Lucas yeah. sells Star yeah. Wars, but but gets a whole buttload of Disney stock. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's like it's like all of, all of the yeah, all of those kind of fans. You know, you know, they're like, you know, oh, George Lucas will definitely go against Disney. They've been treating his baby like this, and yeah, they're just like. I got money. What do you want what me to do? Like George is, Lucas, is, told, he's the one who made the call to sell it to Disney in the first place. Exactly. Like, he did not like, have to he, sell he, it to anyone. He didn't no, have to do no. anything. He made the conscious choice. He picked Disney specifically because he respected their storytelling chops. Mind you, yes. that could be. You know, uh, maybe a bit dubious there, but um, I mean, he, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, if we if we'd have gotten his sequel treatment, then it would have been basically the Ewok Adventures. <laughs> I yeah. mean, we did get that. Like, I mean, look, the the Ewok but, Adventures happened, people. Uh, well, and more more to the point, they were also financially quite successful. <laughs> Yes, well, that's because they were kept, in, uh, kept as cheap TV movie and yeah. uh, a uh-huh. cartoon series. But I'm saying a trilogy, yeah. a trilogy of that with two hundred million dollar budgets mm. was his uh-huh. plan. I, yeah. Anyway, the point is this particular nook of the culture wars um, has gone down over. in flames. And it's over. Now, lo- of course, with this thing over, has ended. This mm. one has. Yeah. Now we turn to the next one. Right. Who, if anybody, wants to fill those shoes? Because Bob Iger's made it clear after 2027, he's really seriously out the door fully this time. Does anybody want to fill want to fill those shoes? I'm like somebody will have to apparently. Unless, you yep. know, he could, you know, do what he did last time. He keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And he's, remember, uh, last, yep, although he's, and, and, he's and very, 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 Remember, the uh, last time they were in this situation, they ended up with Bob Chapik. And we know how um, well that worked out, don't we? <laughs> but, 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 if, but if I get fired, I'll never be a billionaire. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, 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 uh, at this point, it's a case. At this point, it's 
I'd you, also you've got, taking care taking care of this business. Now it's time to take care of the other business, and you need to do so while also ensuring that the company doesn't completely fall apart. I'd just also like to remind everybody if they're thinking, well, you know, Iger is old; he won't be around for very much longer. Evil never dies. I mean, I would not do. I would not use that kind of stuff with Iger. I mean, yeah, he's bad. He's terrible. He's not the devil. He's not Rupert Murdoch. He's, okay, yeah, evil he, comes in comes in comes in degrees, dude. I didn't I, say he was any particular yeah. brand of evil. I just said evil never dies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but anyway, I wouldn't use that kind sinister, of talk with in a sinister in a sinister in a sinister whisper. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, anyway, shifting anyway, focus here. We return to mm-hmm. Paramount because we have mm-hmm. updates. Um, specifically, <laughs> yeah, Paramount <laughs> seems to have settled on a dance partner because they have entered into well, exclusive. Yeah, let me f- finish. I, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Paramount and Skydance. Have entered exclusive merger talks. Now, this doesn't mean a actual merger between the two will happen, but it does mean that this has moved on to a new phase. What that means is they will talk to Skydance for a period of 30 days. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's not right. that binding, but it is more binding than before. Right now, yeah. let's 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 be clear. Let's um be clear about what these talks are specifically about, because you know, again, this is not Skydance going after Paramount Global. This is Skydance going after a majority stake in the National Amusements chain, which only owns an equity of uh, less than 10% of Paramount Global, that but that 10%, that 10% actually, is important because it no, has no, no, no. a vast uh, majority... Oh. No, 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 no. That That's incorrect. Like, no. Mm, this oh, is actually is over Paramount Global because the Paramount Global board has entered into exclusive merger discussions. Nothing here about national amusements. Well... No, act no, th- no. Skydance is going after the majority stake of National Amusements, and then once they get that majority stake, they're immediately no, then going to take I, over Paramount Global as I'm a merger with that. This, no, I'm literally reading this, and that's not correct. Like, like. No, I'm, I'm reading it off. I'm reading it off a deadline here from well, earlier this afternoon. Your, Shares of Paramount Global mistake. jumped it's, at. Well, MSN has different information here. Like, here, um, it, it's 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 going. Where is, it, where is it from from MSN? Because MSN is not an actual thing. It's a link to it. Which is here, it from? Let, let, THR or? Well, here. Um, here's the article I'm reading from. Um, and Say. Um, because they're saying something different here. Like, um, the two have already agreed to terms, but Skydance has made it clear that to close the deal, it needs to make sure that they're allowed to merge their studios. Skydance has partnered with Paramount and oh. blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, merging the studios requires a second deal with Paramount and Sky Dance that has to be approved by an independent committee of directors at Paramount. The committee MSN must approve- has their own articles, they're their own web page, just like the yeah. AOL homepage and the Yahoo homepage. No, no, it's, no, it's, no, 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 MSN links let to me, other me, sources. This is the link to the Wall this. Street Journal. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, that committee must approve this deal that it is good for all shareholders, not national amusement. Paramount's management, including Chairman, uh, Chief Executive Bob Bakish, isn't being included in the dis- decision-making, some of the people said. So, no, this doesn't so, just involve national amusements. This is actually between yeah, Paramount and Skydance. From what, right. From what I'm reading here, uh, it, it's like I've been saying, though. The deal is, the specific deal here, f- firstly, is with a, is with national amusements, but however, however, um, Skydance is making clear that the deal also has to include a merger between Skydance and Paramount. So what's going to happen is what's going to happen is Skydance is going to buy national amusements, 
But then immediately as part of that deal, there will be merge um, an immediate merger announcement, a merger deal between Paramount and Skydance. Yeah. So it's essentially it's it's a wide ranging case, but the deal specifically is for the national amusement stake. But Skydance is not just going for national amusements. The deal is going to be yes, we buy national amusements, but at the same time, Skydance and Paramount Global they they want it locked the stock national and amusements company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they want a total it's, buyout, it's and they have the to, national- and they have to, they have to, they have to buy up the individual pieces in order to get the whole. Yeah, and right, exactly. They have to buy national amusements. An actual merger between the Skydance Studio and the Paramount Studio, like they would Correct. become. That's what this is about. Here. So yeah, that's what it's about. It's specific. It's specifically buying national amusements for that voter, that voting stake that they have. And that voting stake will then allow for an overall merger, but they also want all of the other players involved um, in that company to also agree to it, which is what this is about. They want everybody on board. Yeah. And it's, but it's, also it's telling... a complex situation. Yes. Um, if that's the case, this is very good for Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, well, and which, is, which is their top, which is their top brand, because Skydance has always had a positive relationship with Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and specifically, do, uh... both, and I'm talking both parts too, because I'm talking about the J.J. Abrams part through Bad Robot and the Alex Kurtzman part through um, uh, Secret Hideout. Secret Hideout. Secret Hideout. That's uh, uh, Kurtzman's company that is currently managing the Star Trek global brand. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's they, also- I mean, they had a full, they had a, yeah, they had a full. You know for a fact that they're that they really care about Star Trek because there's like a full cover story from Variety about that. So they clearly do not want. They do clearly understand how important this Star Trek brand is. So. Yeah, they. Well, uh, it's just a simple case of having stability to get there. Yeah, I'm like. It also means that um, Paramount <clears throat> National Amusements at all is signaling th- um, this over the 26 billion dollar offer from Apollo Entertainment, which is not surprising. Yeah, given that Apollo Entertainment makes spurious acquisition claims all the time mm. so Skydance is a serious dance partner here if nothing else yeah oh, and yeah let me let me just I, note here earlier it's it's yeah never mind go ahead and I think there is a good actual chance that um they'll be the merger partner because yeah, I'm not really I mean, seeing it's pretty clear another. That that, yeah, yeah, I'm not really seeing another entity out there that um that is at least got the cards down on the table. You know, it's right. like it's, unless there's it's, it's somebody, basically... you know, out in the blue, it's them. Yeah, it's been, it's only been Ooh. Apollo. Uh, that 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 fake offer from Byron Allen, which again I'm just gonna say right now, every time you see a big offer from him, it's it's fake until he act- like yeah. until he gets one. Anything you see that's big, it's fake because <laughs> where where's he get that money from? Um, but yeah, it's basically been Apollo and that that weird little moment where it looked like that maybe Warner Brothers Discovery would do that thing, but it's basically only been Apollo and Skydance, and now that Apollo is out, it's Skydance. You were were cut off a little bit there. You said that Apollo Entertainment is Byron Allen? No, I... I, 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 um, Who is that? (laughs) Byron who? uh, Byron Allen. Um... Byron Allen, he owns yeah, the I know who channel. Byron Allen is. He he's uh, a, he, he he has a massive. He apparently made a scary offer. Right, but uh, let me finish yeah. my sentence before everybody cuts in there. So, where he gets his money is he makes a metric fuck ton of game shows 
that are cheap to produce and rake in large amounts of cash on daytime television. Yeah, not the amount of money that he's offering these these companies. That's I'll, I'll tell you that. I mean, well, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying I started looking into I started looking into him because I was watching some show that uh, yeah. Louis Anderson was part of for a while, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it was another one of those match yeah. game type programs, and I was like, Funny what, you is should Byron ask. Allen, my, what is Byron Allen doing these days? <laughs> And then I looked yeah. at it, and I was like, "Wow, this is a rather sprawling yeah. empire." Yeah, he's got and, a couple of digital channels um, of his syndicated products. He's got a lot of court shows now. Um, mm -hmm. he, it, it, those are his; those are the bread and butter of a syndication company, along with uh, uh, unscripted shows, and also he owns the Weather Channel, which. <laughs> the money maker! Damn, why didn't you lead with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, as a person yeah, who used um, to sit there and I've zone out issues. to the Weather Channel, as a person who used to sit there and just zone out to the Weather Channel, I'm not one to talk. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've been a fan. I was a fan of that network most of my uh, life. Yeah. Uh, pretty much until it got bought by BlackRock, uh, uh, and it turned private and was thrown into the thrown into the drink, and um. Then it was bought by Byron Allen, and it has gotten really much better. So, uh, oh, to the point where I don't really watch the Weather Channel anymore. Yeah. So, but yeah, Canadian ice truckers. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was but, my point. Yeah, was uh, I, if we're going to anyway. throw them under the bus, let's do it for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I'm not throwing them under the bus per se. It's just uh, you know where are you getting the money it's, for these it, big offers? I mean, I know you got money. I, I know I you got money. The, I, think, I think the implication here is that it seems like he was a ringer to ratchet up the the price. <laughs> yeah, Possibly. it's it's just more of a case of you got money, but you don't got this amount of money. There's a lot of debt that's probably involved with that. So I think it was probably, probably, it was probably it well, it was probably an alternative bid, so that way it it it, it put Ellis on the spot. Uh, in a shit or get off the pot kind of spot, you know, because he was yeah, he kind of he was kind of sort of fucking actually. around. He was kind of sort of fucking around. Also, if yeah. there are too few offers, that looks suspicious. The Federal Trade Commission yeah. doesn't like it when when one person swoops in and makes the only offer. They tend to mm -hmm. they tend to look at that yeah. egregiously. At this point, yeah. At this point, I probably would like to tend to think of Byron until he actually gets. Gets a big fish as a stock as a horse. horse. Yeah, pretty much At what we've been saying here. Yeah. with all of, with all these companies. Yeah, but yeah, but enough, but enough about him. The point of the matter is, is that it's basically Skydance or bust. At this point, either this Skydance deal, which is going to be extremely complex, extremely complicated, and you know, could blow up at any point in the process, even if they do announce this, even if they do seal this deal tentatively. Um, it's either this complex, complicated deal happens and goes through, or it busts at some level of Hello? the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, can y'all hear me? I can hear him. I think, it, I think it's important. Yeah. Adam just bounced. Um, I guess Kevin, he can't I hear or something. I, I'm just going to throw out there, Kevin, that uh, whatever happens, something needs to happen because um, we need Paramount there so that way there's more choice than just Disney and Sony. Yeah, I mean, at this point, for, 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 the, for the record, there is no way that Disney is a place to buy them or buy anybody right now because even after this lengthy, intense proxy fight, there's now the next drama that's going to start, which is, uh, can anybody please replace Iger, please, and thank you? And that's going to take a long time, <laughs> and there's also the whole stuff about keeping Disney Plus going in the float after the thing with Hulu now. Um, there's also the stuff with ESPN. <laughs> a lot of their rights issues, and uh, the direct-to-consumer, and stuff like that coming up, and uh, there's also the fact that the, uh, uh, the movie, the movie, biz, the movie studio needs to uh, step their game up. Uh, so there's all of that happening. So Disney is not in a place um, 
maybe Comcast gets it, but I don't see that at this point. Really, they got, they got their own problems. If any, right? If any of the big players were to make were going to make a big splash with Paramount, they would have done it here, I think, or at least mm-hmm. given out feelers. Warner Brothers Discovery gave out feelers at the very least, and they backed off because they're not the place. So they, they got a lot. Really they still got a lot of house right cleaning. Now. They got they got a lot of house right. cleaning to do, and and the whole thing with exactly. the DCU, the whole thing with the DCU is isn't going to bear start bearing fruit until twenty twenty five at the earliest. Twenty sixth, probably. Well, like probably I said, twenty sixth. Right, but I'm just yeah, saying based on based on the projections from James Gunn and Peter Safran, mm, I, I think we're yeah. I, I think we're looking at a couple of years at least before anything starts to bear fruit there. So you know I mean, they're kind of on a I, slow I, burn I, right now. Yeah, I say 26 because that's the time where we'll have a at least an idea of how Superman Legacy did. And then at the at the very least, you want to have want to get an idea of what the first um, movie of that whole thing is. Because if it's successful there, then at least you got a good start. If there's a bad start there, well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so that's why I say 26 because we'll have a good idea on how Superman did at the very least, and. That's going to probably set the table in terms of can this be sustainable? Yeah. So we'll see on that front. But it'll yeah. be inter- it'll be interesting. But I, I'm kind of you know it's like it's like Warner Brothers was was looking for uh, nostalgia franchises to milk one last time, and it, it, and it's like it's like and then they they've for they've forsaken streaming with Max and all that stuff, and. You know, it's like say what you will about Mel Gibson, but I was very curious to see what Richard Donner's final vision for uh, Final Weapon would have been, because uh-huh. Gibson was directing and executive producing the film as well as starring in it, and it was going to be straight yeah. to Max. It's like uh-huh. it's like what would it take to make that into a theatrical film for Warner Brothers? I mean, they're looking for they're looking for stuff that they can churn out cheap that they can put in the theaters to make some money at long last. So it's like take whatever you can get, man. Don't shelve anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's like and and the and we know the answer. You know what you need, Liam Neeson. There you go. <laughs> there everything, you go. everything, mean- Liam Neeson. That 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 guy will not say no to anything at this point. So, and gonna hey, be a- maybe, but hey, maybe him doing something comedic might, you know, might be interesting. We'll see. Yeah, that and, whole naked you know, gun talking, thing. And and of course, yeah, and of course, you're talking about uh, um, franchises to milk. Warner Brothers decided that they want to do another one. Oh, Matrix. God damn it. Yeah, although to be fair, um, yeah, they they announced today that they have gotten name is let me go back. Ah, here we go. The Wachowskis are not are notably not writing or directing this. Let's be notingful here. Um, Lana Wachowski is going to be executive producing, and only Lana, uh, who's going to be writing and directing this, is Drew Goddard, who. Screen wrote The Martian, and also directed Cabin in the Woods. So um, I, I, which, I, I'm blanking on the I'm blanking on the name of the other Wachowski, but um, she said Lana uh, can do whatever Lily, she wants. I believe. Lily, okay. Yeah. She said, "Yeah, Lana can yeah, do whatever Lily. she wants. What Lana can do whatever she wants with the franchise. I feel like we've done everything we needed to do." with the original trilogy and want, want nothing to do with it. If she feels there's more story to tell, she can do what she wants. That was basically what she said in the media. What was it? Three years ago when matrix four, we'll call it came out. <laughs> yeah. Resurrections. Resurrection. Yeah. Um, so again, I, and, and Lana said that she felt that they had a pretty satisfying ending with resurrections and, you know, so anything else that happens after that is basically yeah, no. passing the yeah. torch on to someone else. Yeah, a lot of people probably would disagree with that statement. Well, I'm just saying that but, what she said was that was that that said, was yeah. the ending that that was the ending that she wanted 
like it or leave it, and that anything that comes mm-hmm. after that she'll be she'll be glad to oversee it, but doesn't really have any interest in creating it because there's nothing more to right. say in her mind. All right, well. That was well, that was the gist it, of what I was getting at. Right. That's mm-hmm. the gist of what I was getting at. Not I, that I, I, not that, right, that, right. I get that you. it was a gr- not that it was a great film by any stretch of the imagination. I I kept looking at right. my watch but and thinking about said. you know thinking about that's bathroom what, breaks from the said, yeah. movie. I get you. <laughs> I'm sitting about, I'm sitting there thinking, I know thinking that, I'm sitting going. there thinking about Dino Nuggies the entire time I'm watching this film. <laughs> well, Just well, saying, you know. Well, you know, yeah, but yeah, well, that's what Lily says. Unfortunately, well, money talks, and yeah. Matrix uh, means money, even if you know the last. Well, that's what I'm saying. Somebody well, else is going to take it on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, somebody right. else is taking it right. on. Right. That's, that's what I was right. getting to. So it doesn't surprise although me technically- that that. Lana is barely involved in it, it is because yeah. Although, you, although te- the, the two although sisters have basically baby, said, yeah, the two sisters have basically yeah. said this is th- this is done. We're you know it's like yeah, any involvement well, we done. have is going to be peripheral at best. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, but yeah, we got a new. But yeah, we are going to get a new Matrix film. It's just a case of you know, is it so fresh and so new that we're going to get a whole new cast or are we going to get the old gang back together again? Oh, God, I hope it's going to be days. a new cast because I don't want to stomach any more films with yeah. Jada in it. <laughs> Jay Pickett, no. Keanu, Keanu can do <laughs> anything for point, all yeah. eternity as far as I'm concerned. Keanu can do no yeah. wrong as far yeah. as I'm concerned. But as far as like anybody else, yeah. I'm yeah. just, I'm, I'm yeah. done, 150,000% done with her. <laughs> 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 Considering the drama that she's had over the last couple of years, yeah, she seems kind like, of like an unpleasant person. I'm just saying that. I'm just throwing that out there yeah. uh, the, on, on on the surface. Well, she appears well, to be an unpleasant it's, it's not, person. It's, it's not. It's not you know bad person. It's more drama person. You know, it's, it's more not necessarily bad. It's just uh, annoying and likes to bring drama around. So. Uh, but, but yeah, we got that. Look forward to from them. Uh, but you know, to be fair, I mean, <laughs> they are putting something to get. They are bringing in talent and starting something going here. I mean, it's not like they haven't booked people to do stuff for Warner Brothers. Others, it's just a case of when will, if any of these, get onto the screen, and you know. It's just a wait and see with that and with everything else with that studio right now. And it's just a case of, will everybody be patient enough to let the things work? Right. Because that's another thing to consider. It's like, you know, patience is a virtue when it comes to creative content, create, creative product. And, you know, if, say, they turn out to be very um, impatient, they could decide to pull the plug suddenly. And also, you know, maybe Warner Brothers gets bought out by Universal after all at the end of the day and all of this because, oh you know, uh, Zaslav and Malone are impatient. <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> you know, not anything to, can not, happen. Not, not to cut anything off, but now that we have Adam back, we no longer have to scrounge for filler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we, but we got all the filler we need. Yeah. We, yeah. But we got the filler that we've needed. All right, so we've we've covered we've covered Paramount, we've covered we've covered Disney, we've covered Warner Brothers we some, and, and franchises. Warner got some Warner talk in there. Yeah. So what's what else have we got? What else we got? Do you want the light or do you want the heavy? Uh, let's, let's go, go with the let's go with the heavy so we can with, let's go with the heavy so we can end, end on with light. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. a good idea. Quiet on the set. Yeah, we have not talked about that yet, have we? Yeah, we've never no, had we anything. haven't. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, is that the what's his face thing? Dan Schneider documentary. Yep. Mm. Or the more, more specifically the 1998 to 2005 Nickelodeon documentary. I would say. Oh my! Oh, yes. You wish. No, no, Dan Schneider. Had a reign that lasted from 1995 to 2018. Well, yeah, that, well, yeah, but 
more specific, yeah. yeah, but more specifically, when it comes to the when it comes to the stuff in the dock, it's that specific period from yeah, about like ninety nine to five. That's when, but I, yeah, that's, that's when his peak is. His peak? Yeah, I know his overall. I know his overall no, range was from ninety six. No, you do other 15. people. You do other yeah. people may not know. It's like mm. keep that in yeah. mind. You know, it, I, it, I, I, I get uh, you. I get you. I, I'm just, I'm just noting the specific time frame of which the events in the doc were noted. But yeah, I understand yeah. fully the overall arc, even if other people don't. But yeah, it's laptops, more of what laptops, that period laptops was. given to others. Laptops given to their studios to work with that did not have DOD wipes on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christ. That's a- that's I'm, a, dancing, I'm dancing around it. I'll let somebody else talk about the specifics. <laughs> well, I mean, uh-huh. where do you start? I suppose, you know, I guess with the man himself. Because, okay, if you don't know who Dan Schneider is, I'm like... Throwing you under your um, rock. <laughs> well, I, not necessarily Under a blessed rock. Well, it, it depends on your age, because you know Nickelodeon has a lot of eras, has a lot of watchers. Like my era of watching Nickelodeon was the late eighties to early nineties. You know, mm. I mm-hmm. grew up watching, say, Clarissa explains it all, and Pete and yeah. Pete. You know, you I can't do that on television. Yes, um, and, and the know. Star Trek animated series ran on there for a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, it yeah, did. But, but it wasn't preempted by Prime Ticket, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Point, uh, you so you had oh, the, you had you had Nickelodeon when it was uh, uh, on a on a timeshare. Yes, you will. indeed, a cable timeshare with Cox Cable. You fucking bastards. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. that's what they used to do. That's what they used to do back in the day. By the way, kids, they used to have networks. Yeah. Firstly, they would sign off, and secondly, um, they would actually have it. They would actually oh, there share was no warning space because there was, was no limited. warning. It just happened. Y- yes. you'd, be, you'd yeah. be happily through watching a show and then basketball. If, if you want a modern yeah. equivalent to this, it's um, Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. Not, not necessarily that. It, yeah, like you like, said, it's a case of so they immediately cut it at a certain time. Mm, but anyway, yeah. let's get back to the point here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, you know, now Dan Schneider's relationship with Nickelodeon started with the first Kids Choice Awards, but the uh, you know his era starts with all that as mm-hmm. he was the head writer of the early seasons. Um, he was on also yeah. previous to this um, an actor in various roles. He's probably best well known as the fat kid from Head in the Class. And like, fun oh. fact, fun fact, his co-star just so happens mm-hmm. to be the head of Paramount Pictures <laughs> and Nickelodeon, yeah. both. Brian Robbins. Wow. <laughs> but, Small yeah. world. Small no, no, world th- indeed, th- yes. That was that was a different sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was another world. Well, that's actually a combination of two. Uh, um, <laughs> small small so- wonder and another world. <laughs> yep. Yes. Like, See, I just that anyway. reference. This program. I understood that reference. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyhow. Like, uh, anyway, but Dan Schneider's reign is like officially clocked as a showmaker with the Amanda Show. You know, like oh boy, you know that's like the first thing that was his baby specifically. Yeah, yeah, and you know the Gamut runs. You know, fucking Zoe One Hundred One, uh, Drake and uh, Josh. Uh, yeah, Zoe One Hundred One, Drake and Josh. Hey, a little program called iCarly. Carly. Mm. Yeah. I'm like the Thunderman. So, so, so the obscure stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you want <laughs> the obscure <laughs> and Schneiderman stuff, 
that's the stuff he did outside of Nickelodeon. Like, <laughs> and he did some. Yeah, dude was a mega giant within the Nickelodeon bubble. Outside uh-huh. of that, the best he could do is like the WB. I'm not even joking about that. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he had some he, sitcom on he, yeah, the WB he, that yeah, lasted he, a year. Yeah, he, not, not, not only that, he, he after the, after Amanda Bynes basically got, grew out of being in the kids shows, uh, he took he and Amanda both, because you know Amanda was big on Nick. They decided to go to Warner Brothers and say, "Hey, let's do a sitcom, okay?" And uh, they did a thing. Was, uh, I think it was called "What I Like About You." Oh God! And well, <laughs> there was a lot of creative creative conflicts between him and the other guy, whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head. Um, but it was a sitcom regular. From the adult side of things, um, but Dan and this other guy got into conflicts regularly, and it got to the point where they basically told Dan to get the fuck out. And once they did that, the show basically deteriorated into nothing. Yeah, and it also doesn't help that the WB was starting to crack and crumble by that point. Um, <laughs> so you don't say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a time. There was a time like between. Like late nineties, just into the two thousands, just at the dawn of the new millennium, where the work where, where the WB was starting to get into a rhythm, but then, well, that rhythm did not last, and <laughs> UPN, despite being, uh, despite the fact that its that its owners were uh, were you know Viacom, yeah, 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 you can figure that one out. Um, UPN took its spot, and by the end of the day, uh, both UPN and the WB decided, hey, we ain't making no money here, let's merge. They still made no money, and now Warner Bros. is on, and now, but now the CW is on my next star, so. Yeah. But, but anyway, that's but yeah, getting one of the a point, bit off. One of the point, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're getting off track here. One of the point is that no. when Dan Snyder got out of the Nick bubble, he, 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 he was proven that uh, he did not, was not up to snuff. Yeah, and I'll note that ever since he parted ways from Nickelodeon, he hasn't done jack shit since then. Anything. Yeah, like, not a single thing. So, no. you know, this was his bread and butter for worse and worse, really. Like, because, well... The allegations that have been made against Dan Schneider are, it's a laundry list of things. I'm like, um, and uh, I the, don't fact recall- that it's, the fact that it, the fact that it seems like Nickelodeon was run by Nambla. <laughs> I mean, that's the most salacious of the allegations. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's but let's the stuff be fair. That's- Let's like, be that's fair, stuff. though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's be fair, though. Those allegations do not involve Dan Schneider. Yeah, that it's specific m- allegation. That specific allegation does not. And yeah, Dan, it, one of the people uh, that was I hate to say under it, him. Yeah, right. But I'll say, but 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 let's be fair here when it comes to that specific allegation and everything involving that. Dan Schneider was not involved in any of that. He didn't. All right. He, he was not involved in any of that and everything else. So, so but you, you know, let's you, be fair. You've be made fair your you, you've made your reasonable yeah. legal disclaimer. Yeah. Right. Like, but but it, it, yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily legal been, disclaimer when. Yeah. yeah. There have been other salacious. Yeah. The, the fact that, the fact that it right. happened on his watch is bothersome in, in and of itself. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, that is true. Yeah. True. That isn't good, but here's the thing. Like, Mm -hmm. um, that specific person was kind of an institutional problem because he went on to, after getting fired from, what was it, Drake and Josh or? um, No, after he was arrested and charged. Yeah. Or wait, Um, are we talking about Dan or are we talking about Peck? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and okay. registered as a sex okay. offender, like mm-hmm. 
he still got hired by the Disney Channel to work on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. God damn it. Yes. Yeah, this was yep. a real thing that happened. So, Disney literally, yeah, the people behind, the people in that realm literally, I'm top thinking, to bottom, what decided to go, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, I'm thinking that the spotlight ne might need to be uh, shown on a few figures that were working at Disney uh, in the mid 2000s as well, because the entire industry. And you know what? Let's be, let, let's expand here, right? This is not just about Nickelodeon. This is not just about Nickelodeon, and it frankly sh should not just be focused on Nickelodeon. It's you the could, entire industry. You could which, make that claim. You could make that claim, but this specific documentary was very much about Dan Schneider. Like, right, exactly. But at the same time, you know, Dan Schneider does not just come into come in and, and become a dominant player at that network just on his own. No, no, right. uh, no, uh, heavens, no. Like, the, right, um, like, just, you know, you can't, like, to just focus on Nickelodeon, to just specifically focus on Dan Snyder, that, but the most, you, like, the you mo can't do that. Okay. You gotta, all right, all right. Yeah, no, all right. Th let me finish. Yes. Like, the okay. most you Go can ahead. say is it's a reflection on Viacom. Like, oh, for the yes. most part. Mm. Oh, yes. But it's like, it's not quite a reflection outside of the thing we mentioned on like Disney or Cartoon Network or, you know, other right. players who have their own thing. You know, it's like, because, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they didn't employ the, uh, you know, Dan Schneider is what I'm saying. You know, I, I, I you know, you say it's a reflection of the industry writ large. I mean, that's true to a certain extent. You know, if only because, yeah, he was one of the biggest players in one of the big three kids network. Yeah. But getting into the details of the most verifiable allegations, um, it's mostly about the toxic workplace stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's, um, you know, the sexual um, allegations mostly have been found to be not true by various investigations. I think the one that has stuck the most is the fetish material complaints. Because, yeah, that one, um, th there's no way to explain the foot stuff, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what a way to throw it out there. Let <laughs> uh, th me put my foot down on this subject. <laughs> well, I'm like, th there's no way to tiptoe around it. God damn it. I hate all of you. <laughs> 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 Look, we don't want to anyway. be twinkle toes on this on this matter. Yeah. And Before we go, we'll come, out, look, we'll come out looking like a heel. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, that's it. I'm done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Done. Right. No, no, nailed it. Put in the mouth. Nailed it. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. putting away the uh, totally spies stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, we, I sure we you we are all oh professional here. <laughs> Moonhawk Studios presents appropriately inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, new riff on that. Uh -huh. uh, so, like I said, getting into the other part of the terribleness of Dan Schneider. Um, it's the hostile work environment. Um, yeah. And yeah. Okay. And these are claims that stretch all the way back to Jessica McCurdy and her biography or memoir, whatever you want to call it. Memoir. I'm glad it's a memoir I'm technically, glad, but yeah. Yeah. I'm glad my mom died. That is by the way, the real title of this. Yes, oh, it which, is. Oh man. Yeah. 
And like, she like, holds an urn on the cover. Uh, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no, no, like, but it, it's it's morbid for a purpose. I, I anyway, feel like I feel like this is a Stephen He emotional damage moment. <laughs> well, I mean, she's not the only one. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's like um, Drake Bell uh, talked yeah. about his the abuse he suffered on Drake and Josh. You know, the thing that, you know, the problem with uh, talking to Drake Bell is yeah, yeah, he's, he, he's, yeah he's had he's had um, he was found guilty. He's an abuser he himself. Found to have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an abuser himself. Yeah, so he continued well, isn't, on. Isn't, with the isn't that the pattern? Yeah, isn't yes, that the yes. pattern though? You know, the, yeah, the cycle, very much it's so. a cycle of abuse, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and like I said, this goes, uh, you know, this goes back all the way to, well, Amanda Pine, um, who has, you know, talked about various toxicity issues with, you know, like Dan Schneider. Like, uh, you know, his biggest pattern of behavior is the unsafe work environment and the misogyny. Like, mm. um, like, uh, very renowned for having a short temper, um, yelling, uh, cursing out people, um, making people, uh, children work very long hours, um, very outside of child labor laws. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> um, Forcing uh, We're breaking women. child labor laws again. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's stuff like, the quote, it's, by it's, the way. It's, it's, it's stuff like this that makes me not want to consume any art from my childhood anymore. Yeah, well, I uh, mean, and you know, I mean, that brings me that brings me back well, to I the mean, point that, that I was making earlier. Well, yeah, I mean, that brings right, so. uh, to the conundrum that a lot of Nickelodeon watchers from especially the you know the 2000s are having to uh -huh. face right now because you know yes. Dan Schneider almost ubiquitous on the live action that side period. yes absolutely you know, it's like now he didn't power all of their big hits like he had nothing to do with uh Ned's declassified survival guide or uh however you title that Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. who's that? Uh, yeah. Who cast didn't read the room? By the way, that's but, you know that but, that's unfortunate, but th that's not what I'm getting at here. You know, but yeah, my, but yeah. The point, you know, that's not the point. You know, my point is like you know he didn't create every single you know big Nickelodeon sitcom of that era, but he created mm -hmm. enough of them. Where he created the biggest, yeah, you know, where it's a significant portion of that child's childhood, as opposed to you know, uh, going back to my own childhood, like I was an avid watcher of Ren and Stimpy, you know, very uh -huh. famously created by you know, no okay. awful person, yeah, John Chris Kowalewski. Um. But on the other hand, you know, I also had Doug and Rugrats uh -huh. and Rocco's Modern Life that have none of that baggage, you know. Uh-huh. And likewise, and, you know, the live action programming of that um, particular time period doesn't have that, except for arguably you can't do that on television and tomorrow people... Roger Price had his own issues. Mm. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, he comes from the British boarding school tradition. Like, uh, but that's a discussion for another day. Po you know, point is, yeah, there were some bad apples there, but they were a lot more isolated. This, right. Th you know, this is literally endemic to the network um, for a very long time, and that, you know, that, uh, you know, 
1999, 2005, in, no, I'd say 2009, really. Um, maybe even longer. You know, really, I think the downstream started with the end of uh, Sam and Cat. Like, yeah. Once again, like, this isn't my era of Nickelodeon. So, right. I, I don't know the particular charting of this, but I do know the rough outline. So we got a good idea now. Yeah. You know, the ultimate point is a lot of people's childhoods have just been shattered because this very awful person um, not only made a lot of shows that a lot of people legitimately enjoyed, um, and now it makes it hard to go back to, but he also ruined the lives of a lot of people, including a lot of children, um, who have to bear those scars to this day. Like, do I have to go back to the, uh, to the memoir again? Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> yeah. So... It's good that, um, and this kind of uh, chatter has been going on since uh, 2012. Now, admittedly, when it comes to the internet portion of that, let's say, uh, let's just say the allegations have gotten, ooh, I won't repeat them here um, because, you know, I don't yeah. want to get sued. But, you know, yeah, you know, <sighs> speculation is. Uh, speculation, but this has been whispered about for a long time. I'm like, and it took to 2018 to dislodge him. So, you know, it's good that he's gone, but, you know, clearly the trail is a mile wide long because I'll note it's what, six years later? And this documentary, um, you know, has gotten a lot of resonance with people. Um, because I think it's a uh, prime, let's say, YouTube creator uh, demographic. Like, a lot of the people who are making YouTube videos these days, they're, you know, they were of that age, you know, as a kid. So, you're getting a lot of video essays on this at all, and a lot of social media chatter about it, which is doubly impressive because this is an investigation discovery documentary. I'm like, and those tend to be on the trashy side of the equation because, you know, discovery. Mm hmm. Anyway, uh, Kevin, is there anything else you wish to add to this? Uh, I, I mean, at, at this point, it's just, uh, all I'd say is that, you know, as we talk about this, let's just keep in mind that this, that this really is the newest iteration of the industry, quote-unquote, treating uh, its younger talent like shit. Like this I has mean, been do we a need problem. To bring up Shirley Temple again. Yes, <laughs> that's what I was going to get at. It's like this gets all the way back to the early golden age of Hollywood. Yeah, or, even earlier yeah. than that. Like, yeah, yeah. My sister was like, a huge this... Shirley Temple fan growing up, and when she heard about what mm -hmm. happened to her, it, I thought I was going to break her. You know. Yeah, it's Shirley Temple. It's uh, the Little Rascals kids. It's. Uh, um, uh, the kid who played Peter Pan, I forgot his name. Uh, Bobby Driscoll, yes, that's his name. Judy Bobby Garland. Driscoll, Judy Garland. You know the list goes on and on. Like, you know, this is this has been a Hollywood problem for generations. This is just the newest iteration of it, mm -hmm. and the goal here should firmly be to use this moment to finally get some real protections for young actors. Unfortunately, I don't see that happening because of the too much money involved. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Like I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic and a pessimist when it comes to this kind of shit. Because, you know, we've had these again, this is just the newest generation. We have this moment where everybody knows about the bullshit. Will anything come from it? I doubt it. I mean, in this case, the answer is yes, something eventually came of it. But Yeah, well they have put protections in, but you know, you know it's that's for now. It took too long. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because once again, you know, Dan Schneider's you know reign over creating shows for Nickelodeon is about nineteen years. You know, nineteen ninety nine to twenty eighteen. That is a long fucking time. Especially mm. in children's media. And this, you know, fucking monster destroyed a lot of lives. And, you know, received very little punishment for it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, he's just one domino in the box. Yep. Uh-huh. Because, you know, there's also the people who enabled this. I, i.e., the suits above him who l- very clearly looked the other way because they didn't want anything happening to their golden boy until it became too much and not even they could ignore it anymore. Yet another glaring reminder, glaring reminder. there is no There's ethical no- consumption under capitalism. Eh, like. Uh, I mean, I mean, this, especially in the current day and age, it's, 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 it's coming kind of hard, not thinking at least. Yeah. I, mean, I can't I hate buy to think it. I hate to. Yeah, I can't buy no, into that. I mean, because, let me finish. I can't buy into that ahead, statement no. because, like, this is the kind of shit that would happen under a socialist system, a communist system as well. I'm like, probably, oh, yeah. So, uh, you know. Well, like, the statement the statement that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism means that that all profits come at a human cost. Although I sub- you know what, frankly, I mean frankly, it really anyway, depends on who owns these companies. But anyway, yeah, anyway. Like, you know, in shifting to the lighter side of the news, yes. um Bakugo takes top position at the May Hero Academia popularity poll yet again. <laughs> yeah. He's such an asshole. Well, I mean, well now because look, but, 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 to... let's be, but, look, look, <laughs> let me be fair. Let me be fair. When it comes to, no, because for this year, for this year in the manga, he had a moment. Okay. <laughs> now the last couple oh years he was dead. Last couple years he was dead. Last couple months in the manga, he had a moment. That allows him to secure that. <laughs> he earned it this year. I, I will. I will. I will. I will I'm do. I, I will. <laughs> I believe the TikToker is Matt Curry who does this, and I will say, I will. I will do my impression of Bakugo right here. Mineta is dead. How do we know him again? Right. 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 Look. Would you? <laughs> look. Look. All I'm just. All I'm just saying is. You know, he took a shot at the big villain. <laughs> like, the, the, considering the la- last couple of years he was dead, this year he had a moment. That's all I'm saying. I'm not a stan of his, just to be fucking clear. I'm just letting you know that that's the reason why, at least for this that, year. Now, that's not the reason why, because he tops the poll every fucking year. Yeah, he does. Isn't he, isn't he like the but, most toxic you know, character on? That show, not not anymore. No, and not no, anymore. Not, not when me. No, exists. he has not been right. He is not, and he's not as a, and he's he's grown as a character. I'll yeah, say that. Like, I don't want to. Here's the thing. He's just yeah, a particular, he's, particularly, yeah. a, particularly abrasive version of Shonen Rival. Yeah, he's Sasuke, but done good, better. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm like he's Sasuke, but better. Yeah, because here's the thing: Bakugo has an actual arc, as opposed uh-huh. to whatever the fuck happened in Naruto. 
<laughs> Which, I mean, he's well, not wrong. Uh, That's yeah, the sad I can part. tell you what. It's like, it's like I my family that... died. My brother did it. I hate my family. My, fa- my I want to kill. I need to kill my brother. Wait, my brother's actually a good guy. Okay. Oh, I wanted to. I want to destroy the village. No, I want to save the village. Now I want to kill everybody. I want to kill the Hokage. <laughs> And I got t- I got tired just listening to that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's not done. Yet. I I did the damn thing for ten years. <laughs> like I spent ten, literally ten years of my life, from when I was fourteen <laughs> to my adult. From not four, yeah, probably yeah. 12, 13, 14. <laughs> I spent just, a full just, decade with this <laughs> sh- franchise. I'll just and repeat the bit. <laughs> I took much. I took much, and then aliens showed up. Bunny aliens. I'll just I'll just repeat the bit. Bunny Banana yes. is yes. dead. <laughs> Who is he again? Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then somehow he married Sakura, and then they had a daughter, and then he abandoned her for t- what? However many years it was. To the point where I mean, Sakura is the one who wanted her. to marry Sasuke. The real question is her taste in men. Fine. There's yeah. so many questions around this. We don't have time. Like, and then, and then, and then there's what's happening in the, uh, and then there's the fact that in the manga right now, Sakura is actually MIA while a lot of shit is going on around her. Like, oh no, um, the um, horror! Sakura is not around. It, 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 like. <laughs> What it literally what involves a daughter. Do? The most no, no, no. consistently involves- useless character in yeah. the history of a franchise. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, well, here's the thing, though. <laughs> like, she's at least done some stuff in a lot of parts of the thing. Right now, she's completely, she's completely radio silent. When it involves her husband, when it involves her daughter, and when it involves essentially her best friend, and she's missing... Yeah, it's almost like this That's... franchise is badly written. And yes, it stop. It has been for years. And then go straight yeah. on through the chompers. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I think anyway. that's about it for this week. Let's, yeah, let's, it's a good place to stop as it's now crossed one. So yeah. All right. Uh, 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 there it is. I was looking, for, I was I looking for the tab. <laughs> Scrolling, scrolling, we're scrolling. Live we're research, walking, we're research. walking. Uh, March, April, inside the studio. Uh, so, special thanks to our guests. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't one this week. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Next week, we will have on the program James Ronald of Epic Game Music. And uh, Adam, would you like to ca- share some insight on this character? Like, no, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy. Who gives a shit? <laughs> well, um, it's kind of in the title. Like, he's yeah. Yeah. a video game remixer. On YouTube, okay. Okay. like um, he also does a lot of music for podcasts and YouTube uh, people. Um, uh-huh. You know, like I linked uh, some of the latest stuff he's been doing here, like um, Snowboard uh-huh. Kids Lo-Fi. Um, you know, it's Lo-Fi Beats, but it's the Snowboard Kids soundtrack. Um, uh-huh. Like another thing, he um, I'm not sure if he contributed this, but he did a uh, retirement tribute uh, song to Matt Pat. Like, hmm. um, no, uh, we'll, yeah, it's like we'll probably get into the weeds of what uh, music he's actually provided to various uh, shows and stuff next week. Like, um. You know, point is, he's got a lot of music here. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, apparently he provided music to an episode of the AVGN. um, Episode 200 end credits theme. Like I said, 
there's a lot here. So, and the good news is he's already confirmed, and there doesn't seem to be a problem here. So, well, thank goodness for that. that sticks. <laughs> I mean, we'll figure yeah. we'll figure out something for Ross at some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he, hopefully he's when he's out of France. We come from right. France. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so and my cats have decided the podcasting is not for me. So I, I will. I guess we'll wrap up at this point. Be sure to join us again next week for another exciting installment of Moonhawk Studios Presents, hopefully with guests. Uh, until then, I'm your host, Mac Paladin. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, kids.